If you don't know me, my name is Amy. I'm an Irish ecologist and I love to grow plants. And that ranges from a hell of a lot of tropical house plants as well as native species outdoors. If you like plants too, you may enjoy this. This is gonna be a long video because we got a lot to get through, but I would advise that you get a cup of tea, some water, some kind of beverage, alcohol, whatever you feel like. <laughs> as well as probably a snack and just sit down and let's talk about plants together. Let's escape a little bit into the beauty of plants. You can see how I set things up, how things are doing, what, what kind of species I have. And the last one I did was in 2021. So it's been quite a while. It's been a good two years since I've done a houseplant tour. I have moved house. <laughs> I have done a lot of additional setup things that I didn't have before. I have a lot more space than I had um, in that video. And I've also learned a hell of a lot more. My plants definitely grow better than they did back then. And I've also changed a little bit about how I approach my plant care as well, which a lot more hands off and letting things go a little bit wild. If you do enjoy, please subscribe um, for my future content. I make educational videos, chill videos, just general stuff like favorites and sharing my love of plants in general and nerding out a little bit. Finally, before we get into it, I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me there and get more bonus content. All the links are in the description. So let's get straight into it because it's gonna be long. So this is the first kind of section, I guess, and shelf. I do want to just quickly note that if you see anything in this video, product-wise, it is probably linked to my Amazon storefront. So my shelves, humidity, temperature readers, fans, things like that are all going to be linked. So that is in the description of the video if you want to check that out. Number one, we have this beautiful queen, is my begonia snow cap. Gorgeous leaves, really beautiful, really big, big old leaves. I do have small hands, but these are big, big leaves. Um, in a giant, giant pot. Look at this big, sturdy old stalk. I did, I, I just couldn't keep up with the repotting of this plant because it just needed it so often, I feel. So I made the kind of dodgy decision to put it in a huge pot just to kind of, you know, give it a bit extra space as long as, you know, I could manage the watering effectively. A couple of leaves did come off the bottom of the stems because like with all begonias, if you repot them, they can have a little bit of a dramatic period, but she's okay. She's adjusted well and it's it's doing pretty good. I probably will cut this back at some point once it adjusts fully. But yeah, she's standing tall there, grows very fast as well, but there is a big internodal spacing as well, so she gets tall fast. Down here then, you may have seen this if you've watched some of my other videos. This is my Hoya Croniana um, Super Silver. So this, <laughs> this is sad. This is the plant I covered in my root rot video and I've had this plant ha with root rot for a long time. It kind of goes in and out. Sometimes I think it's gonna recover and it's doing healthy and then sometimes it does not. But one thing it does do is flower. It still flowers quite often. You can see how many times it's flowered just off that peduncle. We have just flowers dying off here. I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with this. This stalk is probably the healthiest. Stalk, stem, is probably the healthiest. There are some new baby leaves. I don't know. It's been a, it's been a long haul with this plant, really. And it's just quite difficult. I, I think that, you know, if you're dealing with a stressed out plant, it's gonna take a lot more to recover. And all of these leaves are not 
going to recover. They are so desiccated and wrinkly and sad. They're never going to recover. The only hope is really new growth. So I think the next time I feel that the roots are growing well and they're strong and it's well rooted, I probably will just cut it back and just see how it does because the effort it's taking for this plant to keep these kind of dead strands alive and flower is just it's kind of a losing battle to be honest so here we have hoya bella beautiful hoya flowering for me at the moment um, on and off probably one of the more difficult hoyas to get right in terms of watering just because it's definitely a lot more thirsty than others so you can see some of the leaves can get a bit wrinkly which you probably don't want this plant to get to that stage you want to water it before that but I cut it at the beginning of summer and it branched out nicely it's growing well I like how it looks on top of that pot it kind of fills the empty space that there was and I like how it sits but it's quite happy there turning towards the light. Down here we have a plant that you may have seen quite recently in a favorites video and that was my big mistake. So <laughs> I put this in a favorites because it was doing so well. This is Hoya Caudata Sumatra and the second I started speaking about it, it did badly. Definitely has root rot to me. Signs of root rot, it's been watered quite recently and the leaves do not seem to have taken up any water. There's a lot of wrinkling, they're curled back. So the roots are not doing their job. That's what that's telling me. They're not able to take in water. We also have a yellowing leaf. So that's really sad. I hope I can salvage this. I'll be very careful with it from now on. We had a really hot period recently and it was getting very, very hot in this room and I was running fans to keep it down. Because of that, plants were drying out a lot faster than they usually do. So I was a bit more heavy handed with the watering and then the temperature dropped. So I think that's probably what caused that, to be honest. It just got a bit overwatered. Next here we have Hoya polynora. This, I believe I actually filmed this, did I? Maybe I did, potting up propagations. These are propagations from my mother plant. That just wasn't doing very well for a long time. It actually got root mealies as well, and then I kind of just let it die, to be honest. I took cuttings instead. It was also just too big for the space. But these cuttings are doing well. They're happy, they're adjusting. Um, these leaves are some new growth, so it's doing pretty well. Another thirsty Hoya, I would say. Here, then we have Serapegia woodui subspecies spade. So the leaves are a little more spade-like. If you've watched my channel from the beginning, I used to love Serapegia. They were one of my favorite genus of plants to grow. And that has definitely changed. It's not that I don't love growing them, but they're less, I think I love the look of them, the trailing look gorgeous hanging down but they don't excite me as much anymore i'm not quite sure what that is they go fairly fast and i'm just always cutting them back um because they end up trailing on the floor and they get a little bit out of control but you know still a beautiful species and lovely lovely patterns on the leaves in here then we have begonia rex rondo i think it is and this was given to me as a cutting from an Instagram plant friend in 2020, I believe. Really, really gorgeous Begonia Rex variety. There's a lot of different cultivars and hybrids and things. Um, this is more like the summer growth. And then this is more like the winter growth, if you can see um, the differing patterns based off light levels. It's a pretty easy Begonia to grow. I let it dry out way too much which is why I think it stays fairly compact and small. But in general, it's a pretty easy one. If you're starting out with begonias, begonia rex is a good way to go, I would say. Then here we have a little bit of a sad tail. Um, this is one of those plants that I just thought was doing well and that it was not. <laughs> this is my Raphidophora forminifera. Beautiful leaves, I love the ridges and everything is just so pretty. A little bit of chlorosis going on. I do have a plant basics video where I explain what chlorosis is and what might cause it. Um, but yeah, this plant is not super happy. It was doing great. Then I got a fenestration and I got really excited. Then we had this, then we got that, and then we have this. <laughs> 
And I find that Refidifora can do that for sure. They can just, you know, send out a runner and just go a little bit wild. I did try to cut this back here and then it just did the same thing again. So I'm not quite sure what to do with this plant. It did, the aerial roots did stick to this branch and then it didn't. <laughs> so it's searching for something. And whatever it's searching for, it ain't getting. I don't know. Refidifora can be a bit hit and miss sometimes, as well as with watering. They can be a little bit more sensitive in my experience, or at least in my indoor climate anyways. Beside here, we have a lovely classic beauty, the Schifflera or Borcola variegata. This is a really classic hive plant, the umbrella plant, I believe it's also called. It's so beautiful. I really, really love this. It, it like it gives such a beautiful pop of brightness to a corner especially and I really like how it looks. The new leaves are adorable. Hello, hello. And they come in really, really small and they just get bigger. This plant was not doing great for a while. Hence the kind of bare stem bottom you can see at the back there because I really needed to repot it for so long and so it was drying out way too much and lost a lot of it le uh, its leaves, but it's doing better now. And like I said, it's kind of making up for it. <laughs> the leaves are nice and bushy. Then we have a classic 2020 one. <laughs> if you were part of the houseplant craze when it was crazing um, in 2020, Anthurium clarinervum, real um, sought off after plant everybody kind of got one of these it's so beautiful like one of the most striking plants i've ever seen anthurium for me mm, not my favorite genus to grow they're quite slow growing they also definitely prefer much higher humidity than a 60 percent which actually it's exactly 60 percent right now by the way this is linked in my amazon storefront and it is 24.9 degrees Celsius. Can you see that? No, you can't. Yes, you can. And you can also change it to Fahrenheit, which is 76.8 degrees, 77 Fahrenheit for those of you in the US. But yeah, I think it, it prefers much higher humidity and that's not something that I can give them. Um, I only have, I think, one other Anthurium in my collection. Part of me always wants to get more because they're just so cool, but in general, as far as growth pattern goes, they put out new leaves so not often. They're really slow growers, and if you're trying to figure them out and an old leaf yellows, you might not see another leaf for some time. They just prefer a wetter environment. This is a flower coming in now. I will chop that off. I normally cut off the flowers for this so that it can put energy into making more leaves, which it only has four of. It just kind of sits there doing its thing. Doesn't do much, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> so before I get onto the window stuff, we're just gonna keep going down, I think. So this is a feature of many plant areas, spilled soil. So we're just gonna ignore that because I did clean it before this video and then that happened. So this is my Hora Carnosa, which is on the floor. I don't love how many plants are on the floor in this area, but it is what it is. I kind of thought that I wanted to put this plant up in the wall. Then I realized I don't have much space on the wall for such a big plant. Um, so it's here for now. I don't quite know what to do with it. I should put it in another room, but I just don't want to because I love having it here. But it's doing well. I mean, Hoyas are epiphytes. They grow on the ground all the time, so it's not too bad. It's more just annoying when I'm hoovering or walking past. I often knock off new leaves. And um, the leaves are coming in very dark, probably because of the big grow light there. And we have a baby peduncle for the first time. So like, it's happy. It's happy enough and the vines are the vines are vining. Here we have Syngonium podophyllum variegata. This is a cutting from my bigger plant, which you will see later. It's on the wall behind my desk. Beautiful plant. Um, Syngonium for me, not always do well in soil. Honestly, I found them a bit difficult, but I'm learning and they're doing pretty okay. I think they just need a bit more frequent watering than I thought they did, but it's doing pretty good. Beside that then we have Philodendron melanochrysum, which is kind of wrapped around 
doing things over here. I also use these Velcro tapes things <laughs> as using kind of the bars of the shelves for support for certain plants that may not attach on just yet um, and that works pretty well. But yeah, I've shown this in a recent philodendron tour video, so you kind of know the haps. It's a bit scraggly and it doesn't go so great for me, but the second I showed it in that video and talked shit about it, then it started growing a bit better. So I don't know what that is. I think it probably is, this is way too much light for it, but it is where it is. But really beautiful. You should look up the mature version of these leaves because wow. Here then we have Epipremnum or your Mandula or your Mandula pothos, even though it's not a pothos. <laughs> But again, this was uh, this was actually in Lekka. Any plants that I tried Lekka with, I'm going back to soil because it honestly just does not suit me, the semi-hydro stuff. I don't know, it's just, just doesn't suit me. No matter what I do, the plants just grow slowly and don't look as great. So I have transitioned this to soil, it's still, it's still trying to get used to things. So that's okay. So I tend to use this area a little bit because of this really good light for plants that may need an adjustment period, if you know what I mean. Next here we have my Begonia griffin, which I believe is a different species, but I'm not totally sure if it's a hybrid or not, but it's really beautiful. Let me show you away from the light. This is fairly new. I've gotten this recently in the last couple of months. It also flowered for me. The flowers have dried off now, but we have new growth here. Um, it's probably a bit too high light for it here. I just don't know where else to put it. But I think I will move it to this shelf, to be honest, which I'll show you later. Because I, yeah, I think it is too high light for it here, honestly. Then here we have, this is Monstera Friedlichstallii. Um, I got this as, I think it was a, a Secret Santa, Planty Secret Santa for Christmas 2020. And I had this in Pawn, which was also part of the gift. And I tried, I tried the Pawn. Like I said, semi hydro is just not for me. It wasn't growing happy. Then it sent out big runners and just wasn't for me, you know? So I've transitioned it to soil fairly recently. I'm a little bit worried about it. Just trying to take it easy with this one um, and see how it does. It's it's a fairly plain Jane looking Monstera, but when it gets more mature, it looks, it looks pretty cool. So I'm hoping it gets to that stage. So then kind of hidden away here, we have my prop box. <laughs> And let me show you what's going on in here. God, I never ever open this. Like literally never. It is its own ecosystem by now. <laughs> um, we also have quite a few like springtails. We have things working for us in here. I didn't add these. Look at them all. Can you see them? These are my workers. These are eating all of the rotting stuff in here and what's why everything goes so well um, we have monstera species peru we have philodendron tortum we have various other kind of nodes we have a hoya polynora in there and honestly i thought that prop boxes didn't work for me for so long but i honestly didn't realize that it, it for me it took a lot of time it took months and months and months of this to become its own ecosystem for it to then start being healthy enough for things to work in here not just rot i kind of have gone through that period now and things work really well look at those mad tortum leaves juvenile tortum leaves oh and i've just broken one great well uh, yeah so now every now and again i'll just throw something in here and they all grow i have no idea what i'm gonna do with them but they're there if anybody wants them <laughs> So this kind of just sits there. It has stuff on top of it. Okay, moving on. Under the Spider Farmer SF300 grow light, I believe, um, which is fantastic. You know I love Spider Farmer lights. They're my only two real proper grow lights and they're consistently great. And um, this one you can't dim, so it is quite strong under here. So I've really adjusted what goes under here quite a bit. And these are the plants that can handle it. So we have an Ashkenanthus lipstick plant back here, which is 
things are so entangled in my collection, guys. It is hugely sun-stressed. Look, it's about to flower. So the reason this is called lipstick plant is because these flowers, there's like a red stalk that comes out of them. Um, it's so, so, so sun-stressed. Look how purple it is. Um, but I really love it. It can really handle that light and it, it, it enjoys that light. It's very bushy, happy, fantastic, very easy to grow houseplant, quite common. Um, a lot of my plants are quite common. Leaves started turning more green when it got used to the light, but yeah, older leaves turned more purple. That plant was actually a rescue from my sister, actually, um, and it's quite happy back there. We have a lot of purples going on over here. This one then is my Strobilanthes, my Persian Shield Strobilanthes diurineus, which I showed in a recent favorites that didn't do well for me for so long until I realized this plant needs a lot of damn light. So I cut it back to the base and put it here. There's also new shoots coming there and it's really happy. This plant just, it needs a lot of light and it don't like drying out. That's really the key to this. But it looks so beautiful now, it's really compact. It was so kind of leggy and shitty before, but now it's great, so I love that. Um, another one that was in my favorites is my strawberry begonia, which is called what? Saxifraga stolonifera. Really beautiful, pink, fluffy, really likes a lot of light. And again, doesn't like to dry out so much. Dries out a little bit more than the strobilanthes, but, and happy there. I, it had another piece <laughs> that was here that died. It got root rot. Then we have this mad thing, which I'm going to hang up my, Sarah Peggy, like that, so we can see what we're dealing with. This is a fairly new addition. I know it looks so mad right now, but look at these flowers. How cute is that? And this had like so many flowers. You can see all the stalks and they just constantly flower and fall off and they're just everywhere all the time. This is, this is Streptococcus saxorum. It's my first Streptococcus that I've ever grown. I do believe that they need a lot of high light. And to be honest, since I got it, it's been pretty happy here. Um, it's growing new leaves. The leaves are really soft and just delicious to touch. Honestly, they are so soft and nice. And um, it's going pretty well so far. I've left it in the pot that I got it in and we're just seeing how it does. But yeah, the flower stalks are kind of drying out now, but we have new flowers growing as well. It's just so pretty, <laughs> so pretty. I actually missed one back here, which is hard to see. It's one of my few plants left in Lekka. I want to transfer it out of Lekka. It's still alive though. This is my Philodendron White Princess, is it? It will be on the screen. Beautiful variegated white princess. <sighs> Again, like I said, in Lekka, but just grows so slowly for me. Um, there is a new leaf coming in. Leaves are small. The roots are really healthy. Like I don't understand. It has so much roots going on in there, but I don't know. Lekka is just not for me, guys. So I think I will either transition this to soil or just and restart, I'm not quite sure, but all of my remaining Lekka plants that you're going to see will have that happen to in the next while. As you can see, my layout is fairly chaotic. I would, that's how I would describe the layout, Cha chaos, honestly. Um, okay, keeping on the floor here, of which I'm sat on. So here we also have another plant that was shown recently in my uh, philodendron, Tour. This is the beautiful, the majestic philodendron squamiferum. Look at those petioles, guys. Just look. So gorgeous. Becoming really bushy for me. There's a million plants in there that you even can't even see them all. Loads of cuttings I've taken over the years. It was a struggle for me to get this plant to look good. It has taken years, literally. But I think it's pretty happy now. I do think I consistently underwatered it. But I love the way it fills that gap here and it kind of covers what's going on behind there, which is just plugs and timers and things. So I like that. I don't like the aesthetic of the fan, but it is necessary. 
that is something I must say that healthy airflow inside a big plant room like this is really important in terms of you know making sure that things don't become stagnant you need airflow okay it's good for the plants mimics what I think anyway mimics more the natural way of, of things okay so here we have the main shelf the main shelf where most things are happening to be honest starting at the top here we have branch <laughs> branch suspended in a way that I wish I had organized better at the time but I did not and um, they're just hanging by these little hooks some twine this branch is very light and I wanted to kind of have a bit of an air plant canopy going on over here. Now, air plants for me, it's difficult when you put them up this high, let me tell you. Because when they're up this high, you think, yes, it does need water. Yes, I do need to dunk these, but it is all the way up there. Prepare yourselves. My air plants are not well taken care of and probably will need to be replaced. But um, we have some classic Spanish moss, Tillandsia osneoides. Can't remember the name of this one, but this is doing the best, to be honest, of all of them. She's reliable, she's a good one. And they're actively growing, I can't remember the name of that. Then we have dying Spanish moss up here, which I'm very upset about because I cared for this plant. I've had this plant since either the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021 and I was doing so well with it but I just got lazy guys I just got a bit lazy and it's half dead so I will have to replace then we have this one up here also dead and then also dead and then uh, more osneoides and then this one which I've had it for a very long time and it's still alive somehow <laughs> But yeah, so not so hot, but like you never know. You wouldn't know if you looked, if you didn't look too closely. And I still love the way it looks, but it needs a bit of work. I also wish I used see-through um, string and stuff so you couldn't really see it hanging. But you know, next time for the next place. Then we have the very obvious showstopper, which is my Philodendron Gloriosum, which this leaf is really, really coming out there i mean hello too big <laughs> you've seen this plant a bit we have another new leaf coming in at the corner there um it's just so big guys i'm one two three four five six seven eight leaves it takes up the full length so let's let's just show you what's really going on we have a rectangular pot that isn't very long we also have marble queen growing in it which we'll show you later <laughs> Okay, so there's our pot, but here is the plant. Can you see, I'm trying to show you, yeah. So the plant just is basically mostly not in a pot, um, which isn't great for a crawler. It's looking for something it probably needs, it needs it. But I've been talking about air layering this plant and I honestly just haven't gotten around to it, but it continues to grow. And I would say at this stage, it's probably more likely that I would propagate it. Although I have heard that they don't propagate as easily. It would be so much smarter for me to air layer it because it's a crawler and then just chop it because it will already have roots. But yeah, beautiful plant. I love this newest leaf. It's really quite a beautiful shape. It really is just such a great statement plant to have at the top of the shelf. Like it's just so gorgeous, my God. I love it. One of my favorite plants of all time for sure. Over here we have Raven ZZ, Zamiacolca Zamifolia. I mean, I've had this plant. This was one of the first plants I ever got. Slow grower, but over the years has, has grown a lot more, especially this year. And um, we have a lot of small, smaller ones popping out of the soil. It has been in that pot for a very long time, but I have topped it off with new soil and worm castings and replaced the soil and stuff. So it's doing like, it's okay. I have found that honestly, the more kind of root bound it is, the happier it's been. It is a classic staple. I do have a normal ZZ and I just don't really like it that very, very much. And I love this one. So I don't know what that's about. Then right here in front of us, Philodendron atabapoens ex bietiae. So it's a hybrid between those two. Those plants, especially the bietiae, 
I honestly looked at one online recently and I thought, is it really that price? Because they used to be so expensive. Like I remember Bietier being around 200 euros and now you can get one for like 17 euros. And that just goes to show you the hype of a plant really affects the price. And what I've found over the years is like, I've wanted so many plants, even the Gloriosum used to be so expensive. And then I got it for like, was it 50 euros, I think? It used to be way more than that. And sometimes if you just wait, guys, you want it bad enough, you don't always have to pay a high price for things. As you can see, <laughs> there's a leggy situation going on here. I waited too long to give this something to grow up a branch. So I will have to probably cut this and repot and give it a good branch. But it's a beautiful plant, really classic philodendron leaves. Um, like just, I, I, I can't, I mean, it's everything you could want. It has purpley red abaxia side of the leaves. We have a really strong aerial root coming out the side here. And um, it tried to grow onto my gloriosum leaf as well. It's just beautiful, really, really easy to care for. In a tiny pot, it's even kind of falling out of the pot. So it does need a bit of TLC but I really like it placed on the edge of the shelf there. It hangs really nicely. Here we have Satin Pothos or Syndapsis something exotica. Um, it's the one with the really big leaves and it is beautiful. I've had it for quite a long time and I honestly, it didn't grow well for me at all for a long time again. And now it's kind of out of control. It's kind of wrapped around a couple of things. We have this going on. Um, in my refrigerator here, it's a little bit crazy, but it's it's quite happy. It's a good solid solid viner. Next to this, some of you may be disappointed in these because they don't look so hot, but you know what? It's fine. We have Serapegia woodii linearis, the normal one, and then we have the variegated one, and they're both beside each other and they trail all the way down. They are a staple of my plant shelf, to be honest. This Serapegia linear, with Woodyi linearis, I have had for years and years and years. It is a quite a popular video on my channel, the care tips for this. It's very old and embarrassing. <laughs> and um, yeah, like I've cut this plant back to the soil probably once a year for three years and it has, it just always bounces back. There's a flower for you to show you what they look like. They look like, little umbrella penises. But it's a beautiful plant. It's really, really thick because I cut it back so much. I'm just constantly cutting it back. And it's also developed the, I'm gonna put on the screen what they're actually called because I honestly never remember. There's a big one on this one as well. Is there? Yeah, a massive one, look at this. Yeah. But the Vergata is, is more, I, I really, oh look, there's a big ball too. I'm trying so hard to show you in this light. It is so beautiful, it's pinky, it's just, it's such a beautiful plant. Um, there's a lot of new growth going on and a lot of dead stuff too, because when I cut at the bottom of these plants, I roll it up into a circle and I place it on top. And some of it roots and some of it does not, as you can see. So I need to take off that dead stuff, but there's new stuff growing as well. And that just helps to make these plants like much thicker. Honestly, back in the day, my Serapegias looked a lot better than this, I'll tell you. <laughs> but they don't look so good anymore and that's okay. I just haven't put the effort into them, honestly, which is not great. But yeah, I, I need to care for these a bit better. I think this one could definitely do with a new pot and some more regular fertilizing. Something I'm not being so great at recently is fertilizing. Everything needs fertilizer. That's them. So those two kind of sit there. So here we have honestly one of my pride and joys. It has become my pride and joy. This is my Epipremnum aureum marble queen. Your common variegated pothos. One of my first plants that I ever got it had maybe four leaves and now it is so majestic and wait till you see where this plant is growing because I, trust me, it's growing everywhere. Big, huge pot, absolutely massive pot, same size as the begonia snow cap over there. And so we have new growth going on here. We then have side growth going on and down and over here through my marble or through my philodendron gloriosum pot. 
Then we have this. We have all of this, all the way down along. Okay, we're going down along, we're going down. Then we're going across. We're going across here. This is so hard to show you guys. And then we're going up. So we have a couple of different um, stems growing. This is one side. This has just started to attach here on this stalk. But then, but then we keep going, okay? Look at the size of the leaves. Just pay attention to the size of the leaves. Because what in the hell, it's so hard to show you how big this is, but it's way bigger than my hand. And it is just continuing to get bigger. And this, and look, it's also getting a really, really thick, hard stem, which has now I want to show you this property. So it is fully attached to the cork board that I set up, okay? And it's going really well. Look at that. Look at that. We have lots, we have full attachment here. But on top of the area of roots, we also have a stem that has become ridged. And the stem itself is now attaching, which honestly has never happened. For me before on another plant that attaches and wants to grow up things and I find that just absolutely fascinating so the stem itself have has changed in its ability to support itself and like I said look at the difference of the leaves so we have this one and then we have these ones and like I just it just doesn't translate on camera but let me tell you it's huge so I can't now take this plant fully off anymore because it's attached and it's growing everywhere. But honestly, it is just so fascinating to watch this plant grow. And it's really, really, really thriving. It will very soon reach the top of this. I'm unsure if I will actually continue because I still have more of this. If you've seen my other videos, I actually covered this whole area in the um, cork board and then I really hated how it looked, so I took it all down. But I have still more of this and I may continue it underneath, but we'll get to that later. We're sticking to the shell. So now we are under the main Spider Farmer SF1000, which you have seen many times, I would say. My main grow light, my strongest grow light. Fantastic grow light, cannot recommend enough. So that is how that looks. So in here we have my Pilea Glauca, big feature of the channel, was cut back and given a new pot fairly recently. So it is in an adjustment period, I would say. It does kind of come around the side here, but I massively cut it back. Um, it was way bigger than this. It really needed a cut back. You can see kind of the red stems, the tiny little leaves, really beautiful. And it's happy, it's, it's quite happy. It's just adjusting. It likes the highlight as well. Here we have Rahoya Rotunda Flora, which you can barely even see. So I'm going to take it out. I think this needs water. That is that. Look how pretty. Beautiful leaves. Beautiful leaves waiting for a peduncle. Where is the peduncle? Please just flower for me. I don't think I have any peduncles, but it will flower for me eventually. And it's quite happy here too. So then we have Philodendron Brazil, which I have also shown in my philodendron tour. It is a plant that I didn't like initially. Don't even really know why I got it. I kind of hated the color of it. And now that has totally changed. And now I love the color of it. I kind of love the orangey stems, which orangey pink stems, which I used to hate. Again, a plant that was so much bigger, almost on the level of the orium, like big leaves. And then it fell <laughs> and it got smashed. So I kind of started again with this and repotted it. The stems are getting thicker, the, the leaves are getting a bit bigger and it really trails down here. Kind of had to restart again with this one. Then in the back, which it's even hard to get into my plants sometimes, we have a little bit of wildness happening. We have another Philodendron Melnochrysum, which was a cutting that I um, potted up in a very small pot and just wanted to see how it did with the light but I think I would probably move it now that it's well rooted. Begonia spa, don't know what this is, very sun stressed but it's really cute I think. Let me show you away from the light. It's really really cute. Um, it may be time to move it away though 
from the light. Even though it was enjoying it, it's so washed out. It's to the point of like bleaching. So not great, even though it is still actively growing. Then we have Hoya manipurensis, which has taken off. Sometimes Hoyas just do that. Look at that, madness. Um, it's growing all over my lithops. <laughs> Hoya manipurensis, let me put this back, it's actually quite heavy. Um, gave it a bigger pot than I should have. Honestly, it reacted very well to that. I was sick of it by just putting in small pots. Here's a little peduncle for you. Flowers on this are weird, much more like a dishidia. There's a bit of humming and hawing under whether it is a Hoya. Apparently on DNA it is a Hoya, but it's really cool. Look at the like shape of the leaves, it's mad. We got some new shoots, it's very, very happy. But I think it's time to cut this long piece to make it branch out and maybe propagate and fill out the pot a little bit more. So I have a video on my channel where I show how I made these little displays that are back here and um, it's a, a good chance to update you on how these actually did. So first of all we have the Lithops one which is a bit... Mm, it's okay, it's not doing so great. A lot of the Lithops dried out and weren't super happy but some of them got new leaves. I really don't know what to say about this. It's not doing so great, and I don't really know why, but I also haven't really paid attention to it that much. Definitely these kind of weirder, longer bits <laughs> are doing okay, they're adjusting. I think the adjustment period might have just been a little bit too difficult. I still love the way it looks. I don't know, it probably needs more water, to be honest, now that I'm thinking of it. It still looks pretty cool, I think. But anyway, that's how that's doing. Definitely needs more attention for me. I think definitely when you start to put plants behind taller plants and you're not seeing it as much, things can get missed. But this one, on the other hand, is doing much better. This is my cactus kind of display. My, uh, this is Avonia papracia, very cool looking, weird, weird, weird plant. But it has quite enjoyed this transition, I think. And the cactus have definitely grown. These are cactus seedlings that I had. I grew these from seed, madly enough. And um, they're really happy. So this is doing really well. Funnily enough, this one has a drainage hole and this one does not. So I don't, I, you know, I'd always be afraid of things without drainage holes, but that's why I pulled back on the watering, but maybe I pulled back a little bit too much. But that's doing well. Then over here is my Hoya David Kamingii, and it's big, guys. It's a big old plant, has a big old pot now. Let me show you the flowers. These are kind of dried, but yeah, they're pink and yellow flowers. It kind of flowers non-stop and I always get a big pile of dead flowers back here, which is sometimes a bit annoying. But yeah, those are the flowers. It's really pretty. I love the leaves. It grows really easily for me. This was the first Hoya ever to flower for me. And so it holds a special place in my heart and it continuously flowers. It's a non-stop flower all year round. I recently gave it a new pot and it is quite happy with that, I think. So that's where she sits. Got some new sun stress leaves coming in there. Then we have a big, big love of mine. Hibiscus rosa sinensis variegata. Um, like, wow. Talk about wow. Uh, look at all this white with a little bit of green. It is so beautiful. Can't even believe it. It's doing really well, but I have to say I did repot it and it it's still just adjusting. I think it's gonna be okay, but like, I actually just, I'm sorry, it's just every time I look at this, I cannot get over how beautiful it really is. Um, but this has flowered for me. I have a time lapse of it, but I have gone through periods of cutting it to make it branch out, and that definitely discourages flowering in my opinion. But I am kind of, because it's been repotted and it's been cut back a few times, I'm just going to kind of leave it now and hopefully we will get flowering again. But I do put it down to the strength of this beautiful grow light. I don't think it would have flowered for me if I wasn't able to give it that. But it's, it's quite big now, honestly. It's quite the big bush over here. So that is that shelf. So following on, we may as well start over here. <laughs> because even though this is up here, its pot is down there. 
This is my Refritifora de Cursiva. Wow. I mean, hello leaves. So it's growing all the way up here. I have tried to support it a little bit with this pole. We go down here. There was a point where I had to cut it here because it was getting way too scraggly really. And that's how it looks. It's really, really beautiful. Going down, 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 down. And this is where it ends up into this small little pot. And I'm keeping it in that small pot because I'm afraid <laughs> to overwater it. And it has these fuzzy aerial roots that aren't really going anywhere. But yeah, like I said about earlier, Rifidophora, is that I'm always a bit more careful about the frequency of watering for them because they can get yellow leaves and kind of not be happy about that. They're less forgiving, essentially, is what I mean. But yeah, beautiful plant and it's, it's kind of growing all the way up the side here. It's quite hard to follow my plants around with the camera. <laughs> so then here we have Begonia Masoniana. Wow, 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 hello, beautiful. Let me show you. So it kind of has fluffy, spiky, weird looking leaves, really mad looking back. A little bit more of a difficult Hoya, I would say, to take care of. It's very, very particular about watering. Probably could do with higher humidity that I don't give it, but I've managed to kind of make that work. I have overwatered it a few times and it's struggled, but um, there was other stalks here that died. Um, stems, stalks. And, but I mean, I think I've got it pretty okay. Not super high light, but enough. Honestly, I'm doing pretty well with it, but you know what? It's probably gonna die next week because I said that, because that tends to happen. Then we have a cutting of my Begonia Black Fang, which, has been propagated a long time ago, and it does have roots, but I do not know why it has never tried to grow another leaf. It was a leaf, um, it wasn't a cutting, it was a leaf, just a leaf that I rooted. You'll see my mother plant in a while, but I just was curious about this, like why is it not growing more leaves, even though it has roots, and it's had roots for a very, very long time, like well over a year now. I just don't know why. Um, it was just something I wanted to try because you can, I think with all begonias, but I'm not quite sure, I, you can grow them from just a leaf, like from the, the petiole. No, you don't need a node on a stem. So I was just kind of experimenting with that and I'm still experimenting with it and not sure why it does not want to grow new leaves. Here then we have a plant that honestly used to be growing up this entire shelf but got looking really shitty and unmanageable, so I literally cut it back down to the soil. <laughs> um, and that is my uh, Monstera Celtipicana, and it's growing back now, um, but it's a little bit weak looking. It still had a fantastic root system, and it's still quite happy in this pot, but it's growing back. I just wanted to restart it, you know? Sometimes that just happens. You can do what you want to your plants. Back here, looking so beautiful, um, and it was on a recent favorites because look how gorgeous, like. And honestly, the leaves are getting bigger and bigger with this. I bought this as a baby, baby plant with like four or five leaves. I did have a massive version of this when I first started growing houseplants, which since I uh, got spider mites and died. But yeah, so I decided I'll just start with the small one and see how it goes. And it, I've had it for quite a while now, maybe two years. It's done really well and it's beautiful. Stromanthi sanguinea, tricolor, I think. Beautiful, it sits back here, adds some nice color. This plant then is my philodendron black cardinal, I believe. Um, I don't know if it is actually that, but that's what I call it. <laughs> that's what I think it's closest to. It has a, quite a different growth habit compared to other philodendrons. Like it kind of stays quite compact and in a bush rather than growing long and straggly and trying to climb things. Um, but it's, it's quite beautiful. It's one I thought about getting rid of a few times because I just didn't really take care of it, but it's kind of taken off. It's quite comfortable where it is right now. And um, it's, it's this is the newest leaf. It's really, really quite beautiful and plain, but dark and cute and red. 
<laughs> right over here we have one of my two Maranta fascinators Maranta Lucanora fascinator I'm getting a little bit too big for this area it's kind of I don't know it's doing whatever um, also flowering really small beautiful but beautiful flowers and this is just gorgeous it's yeah it's it's literally growing everywhere guys it's growing on top of top of these plants and everything probably needs a new location i was thinking this could look quite good on a plant hook on the wall somewhere maybe in a different room um because it's such it's such a statement plant and it's really quite easy to care for i mean look at look at that leaf detail let's look at, let's look at that hello is that painted by picasso because it looks like it could have been yeah just a non-stop grow i don't have much else to say about that here we have a plant that used to do great for me and honestly hasn't been happening in a long time but totally my fault and i'm not doing anything about it I think I gave it too big of a pot and it is not so happy about it. It does grow, but it's, mm. I thought because this plant just cannot deal with not having water, that I would put it in a bigger pot and it could just have more water content. It kind of stunted its growth a little bit in a weird way. This is Begonia Luxuriance and it has beautiful serrated leaves. Um, it is so pretty. And it's very dramatic. As far as begonias go, quite difficult, I would say. It's not forgiving. If it feels dry for half a second, it will flop over and look totally dead and all the leaves are crisp up. So <laughs> it's not great. But like, it's doing okay here. It just used to grow much faster for me and have much bigger leaves. But like I said, I haven't been paying attention to it. So like, that's totally fair. I totally understand, but maybe I should take better care of it then might do better. So beside that is one of my only other anthuriums, I believe, um, a plant that I won in a competition on Instagram like two years ago, and I kind of just could not believe that I actually won it. I think it, it's worth taking this out to show you properly what it looks like. But honestly, it's been doing pretty good. This is Anthurium erisemioides. Yes, it looks mad. As far as like stems go, like what but i've never cut it because i'm too afraid to because again it's a special one and um, it is so beautiful it's one of those corrugated anthuriums um which i would argue are a little bit more difficult to grow to be honest but like the more i've ignored it in this corner the better it's done i'm just trying not to look at it <laughs> newest leaf here Oh, so gorgeous. God, I forgot how beautiful this is. But yeah, it's lost all of its lower leaves. My fault. It's in quite a barky, mad looking mix. There's a leaf. But like, it's doing okay. It's growing. It seems happy in a little bit more darkness than it had. It's had various different places. It was in my old house as well. I think it likes a little bit more shade, honestly. But it, yeah, it doesn't like to dry out, but it also gets angry if you water it too frequently. So it's a bit of a up and down, but I love it. And I'm very happy it's still alive. I'm proud of myself for keeping this alive, honestly. So the last three on this shelf are my Monstera species Peru, which is quite big and bushy. The leaves are quite amazing on this one, but I find as, as far as growth habit goes, it really just puts out a lot of um, runners for me. And it grew like a bush for so long, and then it was like, no, I'm, I need a runner. And it just puts out runners so much, and I always just cut them off. But I also just let it do its thing. It's quite, it's bigger than it looks, I think, in this video, but it's, there's a lot going on with this plant. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's quite easy to care for. Um, it definitely needs more nutrition. That's what that's telling me. My fault, not fertilizing enough. Chronic, not fertilizing enough. <laughs> um, but it's beautiful. It's quite forgiving. As a Monstera, I think it's quite easy to grow. And it looks cool. It kind of looks like, reminds me of dragons. <laughs> it's the first thing that comes to, head, to my mind. Um, yeah but it's, it's a cool one. I like it. 
As far as growing it up things though, like other monsters, I find it, it doesn't do as well with that. It, it likes to kind of twirl around and then it just sends out a runner. But I think it, it looks pretty cool in this corner for sure. Back here then we actually have a Kalanchoe that looks so weird right now. It's, it's kind of crazy how different this looked. This plant used to be on this shelf, so it was getting way higher light. The leaves were really facing upwards and quite compact. Um, I think they were even potentially protecting themselves from the higher light levels. And then when I moved it down, they all kind of spread out like this. And I'm not talking about legginess, I'm talking about the leaves were literally upright like that. So the leaves seem to be exposing themselves more to get higher light because this plant likes higher light for sure but beautiful coloring on the edges of the leaves it's a it's a really beautiful one and it has furry leaves and they're really cute i like it but it was getting too tall it was just actually growing too well <laughs> up there and i had to bring it down in here then this is probably quite an embarrassing one but you know um this is a syngonium can't remember the name of that I actually took a cutting of when I was in Lebanon um, in 2021 and it was growing outside in a garden and I took it home and it's beautiful it had a beautiful leaf shape I put it in Lekka because it's a syngonium and I'm afraid I was afraid of growing them in soil but yeah let's show you so you see that vine you see that vine that leafless vine that leafless vine goes all the way up to that corner and there it is and now it has small leaves so it's quite sad it's a total failure by me it needs to be cut it needs to be propagated and i haven't done that have i so that's that but it's it's going to be changed this situation must be changed um i want to cut it i want to propagate it i want to try grow it properly in soil and take it out of leka but I just let it grow mad over here. And that's exactly what has happened. The next section, <laughs> which this has taken some time. So we, we have this section, then we have the window and we have behind the desk and then a couple of other plants in the rest of the house. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So this is honestly one of my favorite plant quarters in the whole house. And it has kind of given me a lot of inspiration on how I would probably like plants in my next place to be a lot less industrial which like the classic shelves and stuff. While that is so practical and I do have way too many plants, this situation is much more like what I would like to focus on I think as far as plant styling goes. I'm really happy with this corner and I love how it looks. Now the only part I don't like is the edge of this cork board but let's forget about that. So. I guess starting from the top, a quite recent addition, I have this as a shorts on my channel. I had this kind of blank section and I didn't like it and I wanted to fill it. So I have these terracotta plant kind of hooks that I first saw on Becca Della Plants channel and my God, do I love them. It's struggling to focus on that. There you go. So you screw them into the wall and they hold a terracotta pot like that, which looks scary, but actually they're a lot more sturdy than you think. Even these plants are, these pots are big and when they're full of water, they're quite heavy, but obviously be careful of your walls. And so I got a pot that was a similar color to the wall, kind of white terracotta, off white terracotta. And that has worked so well. And I just love how that looks. So it really just makes you focus on the plant itself. So this is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. It's a big girl. It's never flowered for me, but it's so gorgeous. I really, really love it. And I'm so happy with how that looks in the space, but it definitely needs to grow into the space a little bit, which it's starting to at the top there. <laughs> so that's her. Then here we have Philodendron, Hederaceum, typical heart leaf. It's quite long now. It's kind of hard to see, but it's actually all the way down there. <laughs> it's kind of growing out of control. I want to get a couple of hooks to bring a strand here and kind of just direct it over the door. I think that would be quite nice because it has quite a few different stems going on. Um, very easy, solid, 
common house plant, but really it's so beautiful and shaped like a heart. Then we have this just branch. <laughs> Aesthetically, nothing's growing on it. It's just there. I just quite like how it looks. Here in this corner, we have two philodendron tortums, a beautiful kind of fern-like um, philodendron, which is quite unlike any other philodendron's growth habit that I know of. I know there are a few like this, but this is the only one I have. This pot is just full of loads of different propagations from the mother plant, which is this, that used to be so big, <laughs> but it was kind of one strand, one stem and I want to create a bushier plant. So I think in the future, I'm probably gonna up pop this and include all of these cuttings in that to create just much more of a bushy because I think it looks amazing when it's bushy, which is quite similar to what I did with this guamiferum. But they are growing here and very happy here. Then we have the Epipremnum Marble Queen, literally the queen, which you've already seen. And then we have my Varicosum, which um, I was away on field surveys all last week and unfortunately missed this one to water before I went, which is very annoying because then it suffered. <laughs> it does not like drying out this philodendron, but that's okay. That's only one strand there. Then we have this growing up, 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 up. I'm trying to get it to attach. It hasn't yet, which is annoying, but that's okay. So philodendron varicosum, I've had for a long time, but again, it's a, a plant that I have propagated a lot of and cut back to the soil a lot as well, probably because it is a little bit trickier for me to get this plant to attach with aerial roots to something. And it just doesn't seem to want to do that. It's probably low humidity, but anyway, it is still beautiful. Velvety, heart-shaped, very cool back at the leaves absolutely gorgeous hairy petioles the leaves come out like this this new leaf really really beautiful and um, i just use pins to attach them encourage them <laughs> um so yeah so those two grow together i could do with a third plant over here but i don't want to push it but i don't love the way this edge looks but it's okay it's serving a very real purpose right now then we move on to one of my biggest pride and joys. <sighs> I have quite a few videos about this plant on my channel, but man, this takes my breath away. I have to measure this leaf because this is so big. This is much bigger <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. It's absolutely massive. So I'm gonna measure it when I edit it, and I'm gonna put it on the screen to show you how big this leaf really is. But this philodendron species affinity sagifolium, because I don't quite know what it is, but that's probably the closest to what it is. It's very, very big and beautiful, and I'm gonna show you now. It has like a million leaves everywhere, but I want to show you what the stem looks like because it's quite thick really 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 juicy and thick and we have aerial roots and they're growing around um, the branch there and then we have it in a giant pot and this is something I got that I hope is going to start rooting what is this this is Pilea depressa depressa you don't make me depressa um, <laughs> which is something I wanted to try. I tried a Helixene kind of ground cover plant that died. I think it didn't get enough light. So I'm trying to get something to cover kind of the bare parts of these pots. I have another one here and it's going pretty well. They're getting leggy because of course they don't get a lot of light here. That will be okay with me if it does actually work and cover the bare. I'm just kind of experimenting with these because I think if I find something that works as a ground cover, that I would probably apply it to most of my other plants. I don't really want to have bare tops of soils anymore and moss for me, well, I don't use sphagnum moss in my houseplant hobby anyway, but other types of mosses don't seem to work either because they require a lot more moisture than I'm willing to give them. Um, but yeah, testing them out. So that's growing there. I love this plant. I have a full story about it on my channel and I have updates. It started as a two or three leaf cutting and now it's an absolute freaking tree that's over a meter tall. <laughs> 
Um, then down here we have two species, philodendron species fuzzy petioles. We have this one, that's just a small thing in a pot. And then we have kind of the mother plant, but I spoke about this in my recent philodendron tour and it just is a weird grower for me. It's kind of a bit hit and miss. It, some of the leaves come out like this. It doesn't have pests, I'm sure that it doesn't. I've propagated it a few times. It's a bit scraggly, it's weird, but I just kind of let it do its thing and it's not turning out too bad. It's just, I'm just trying to see how it works in terms of growth habit. We'll, we'll keep going. And then the last one in this corner, which is an absolute freaking tree, is my philodendron podatum. I've had this plant for a very long time. One of my first videos on my channel was an unboxing where I got this plant and it was from an EU plant shop and it was a small plant and it is so big. It is again over a meter tall. I, I have a, I propagated it so many times and I put them, I put one of them recently down below because we lost kind of lower leaves, which happens when your plants are old. But I might do a bit more of that. Then we have again this Pilea depressa ground cover, and it attaches so well to this big, thick branch. Also has some extra floral nectaries going on if you've seen my recent Plant Basics video. I mean, look at that, look at that leaf shape. It's so cool. Red petioles, shiny, beautiful, such a statement. And so that is how that corner looks, really gorgeous. So now we're going to cover the kind of window type plants, which I don't show as often because I try not to show the outside of my house too much, but here we go. This is what I have going on. It's also incredibly backlit, so it's very hard to actually see what's going on, but trust me, there's a lot going on as per. So over here we have my Hoya stratus lisa that has recently got a massive pot and is growing out of absolute control. We have things growing up here, we have things growing down here, we have vines everywhere. She's very happy, she loves her life. <laughs> then we have massive uh, Nepenthes, can't remember the name of this one, but it's very happy. It has also gotten a new pot this year and um, both of my Nepenthes have. I'm going to do a video on both of these soon because my learning curve in terms of care with this was quite steep, but they both survived and are doing quite well. Require definitely a lot of light in my experience. Very, very cool plant to grow, carnivorous and happy out. Moving on, I have to kind of show you at the side here because it's genuinely too hard to see. We have a massive Hoya linearis. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous draping beauty in the window. I love this plant so much. I've also recently repotted it last couple of months and it was in a tiny, freaking tiny nursery pot that I got it in that it was so root bound in for so long. Um, it's doing great, but it's definitely getting quite heavy on one side and I am a little bit worried that it's even going to rip the roots out. If you can see, it's quite hard I don't really know what to do with it, but it's okay for now and it's pretty stable, but I want it to definitely grow a bit more roots just to stabilize, but I'm not sure if it will be able to do that. We will see. Over this side, we have Nepenthes number two, which is, I believe, Nepenthes Bloody Mary, which is very hard to show you in this light. The pictures are much bigger. They're blood red, literally bloody Mary. Let me take it down because you can't see anything. I know all these spots don't look great, but it's actually sun stressing. It looks a bit weird, but anyway, it definitely had an adjust. Oh, look at that massive one. Jesus, I didn't even see that. It definitely had more of an adjustment period than the other Nepenthes when I repotted it, but it's recovered now and it's doing pretty well, I believe. Um, again, highlight, but I will think I'll cover that in, a, in its own video. We have another Maranta Lucanora fascinator um, hanging on the side of this here, and I really, really like it. It's beautiful. Um, grows a little bit crazy. Had a bit of a an issue with that recently um, where I forgot to water it for way too long and it got a bit sad, but I think it's recovered okay now also kind of flowering on and off. Beautiful. And then 
down here we have Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, which is giving me some beautiful pink leaves recently. That's really, really nice. I'm very happy on this windowsill. It's been here since we moved, really. Kind of drapes down around there. And uh, I love it. And a lot of white leaves as well, which are lasting a lot longer than I expected them to. Then here we have a real sweetie, which is not going to like me moving it. This is Mimosa pudica, which is known as the sensitive plant. So this plant actually reacts, which I don't like to do because it kind of stresses it out, but I'll do it just to show you. So if I touch it, it's going to literally react to that and pull away. If you can focus on the right thing, I'll do it. Oh, okay, one more. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. So yeah, it's a real beauty. I just try to literally not even touch it, but uh, that's, uh, it's not super new, but it's not super old for me either. I definitely got it this year and uh, I was trying to figure out how to water it properly, to be honest, because it was not so happy with me and some of the stalks died, but I think it has recovered and we're, we're, we're understanding each other a little bit. So here we have one which is quite funnily not doing so great because I actually showed this on my channel and it was quite funnily discussed. I'm gonna show it down here because of the light. So this is Staghorn Fern Platus Serum Bifurcatum. I showed it in a video um, in the last couple of months and someone was like, I don't think that they can really be in soil like because they grow on the sides of trees and stuff and most people mount these You've probably seen them before and I just thought maybe I'll try it in soil though. Maybe it might work Maybe I will try it in soil. Maybe it might work. I don't think it is now It's going out of control trying to build new shields, right? and some of them went really well but then they die almost immediately after so that to me not good so i am going to mount it i am just in the process of i have um cork bark mounts for it i'm trying to figure out what to mount it in since i don't use sphagnum moss but i may actually just have to do it for once um to give this plant what it needs because it's not happy i gotta do right by it you know but anyway i tried the experiment it didn't work that's okay <laughs> here we have begonia linda dawn up here that i loved by the window but i said earlier that we got a bit of a really hot period and i I wasn't home for one or two days and it just got burnt to shit at this window. Excuse my language. Um, and it lost a lot of its lower leaves, which is really annoying, but it happens. So she needs to probably be moved. I mean, she's okay here most of the time, but quite annoying. Beautiful begonia, very red leaves, has kind of uh, spikes on the leaves as well. Quite easy to care for in my opinion, and it's gotten quite big now. So I got a new standing desk, which is quite annoying in terms of cabling. But anyway, um, I'm actually gonna put this down so that we can see a little bit better. Um, but so this is the other side of the plant room, obviously much more functional. <laughs> oh, as a space, we have dog bed, chair, this is where I work half of the week and they're for ecology and then, well, if I'm not in the field, and then um, that's where I do all of my editing and YouTube stuff for the other half of the week. So please subscribe so I can continue doing that. Um, <laughs> so this is my Philodendron Gigas, which I recently cut back, which I noted in my Philodendron tour that I would, because it was a bit unhappy. Um, but yeah, it was kind of scraggly and growing up this branch. But um, yeah, so it's in the corner here with these little uh, felt flowers that I got from a friend. And it's just so cool. It's just so cool. In my opinion, much easier to grow than the Melanochrysum and has the same kind of effect. You know, the long, sad looking, velvety, beautiful dark leaves. Um, but yeah, that's kind of in the corner here. It was more impressive when it was taller, but that's okay. And then over here near my 
beautiful bats, which I think the leaves kind of remind me of the bats, which is weird. But anyway, um, up here on we have the same terracotta things is my Syngonium putophyllum vergata that I took the cutting from the one earlier. So this is kind of the mother plant um, growing quite well for me even though I wasn't quite nervous about this one in soil, but it's it's growing well. It kind of has a variegated strand, a couple of variegated strands, some with some yellow variegation, some with more mottled, and then it has kind of a green non-variegated strand that I have hooked up here and it just kind of grows a bit mad, but I kind of love how it looks. It's quite fun and mad. And then over here we have another philodendron varicosum, which was a cutting that I decided to put separately and see how that looked here. Just let it try to grow on the wall maybe. Just the final thing is a kind of a stand I have that helps me for transporting things out to the bath and stuff. Um, we have <laughs> lovely stick that I took from a survey last week that I'm thinking I'm going to grow something on because it's beautiful. I'm just letting it dry out a bit more. Um, we have some mixtures. We have a, what is in there? There's alcohol and soap in there, I believe, um, that I use for just spot treatments. And then I have my mother plant, Begonia Black Fang, that grows quite well in this corner. And it's quite a big one, to be honest. It's quite hefty and grows quite mad on both sides. <laughs> but I love this plant, I've had it for quite a while and think it's really, really cool. It's spiky, it's gothic, it's black, has these amazing kind of green venation things. And then I have anything that's propagating, which don't judge, need to be topped up. We have some philodendron gigas, new leaves. We have monstera sotopicana, we have, oh, I just realized I've missed this. Monster stand Liana Vergata. What else is there? I have a Hoya Polynora. I think that's kind of it. I recently went through these and potted some up. But I've just reminded that I actually missed a plant over here. Over here, which is my Monster stand Liana Vergata, which has been through it, guys. I cut this back because. Um, I wanted to try and regrow it because it was getting too tall, which I think was a big mistake because then I ended up with a white stalk that just keeps getting white. I keep cutting it back and it keeps getting white. I keep cutting it back to below where it was last green and it keeps going white, which is just so infuriating because they just keep dying. And then we have the other st strand which has just taken off so it's not as bad but the leaves are very small so it's kind of a nothing plant at the moment and it used to be so big so we're going to do a very quick run through and an honorable mention for the other plants in the rest of the house of which i thought there weren't many but it, this video is so long already let's do it in my bedroom we have this typical jade pothos epipremnum aureum I hang this up or kind of hook this in with command strips and I just love this addition to the bedroom like the most common plain house plant you can get but it's absolutely gorgeous when you trail it and um, I want to have more strands of this and continue growing it it just adds a real kind of cozy nice vibe to the bedroom and I love watching it grow as well in the spare bedroom then, we have your average Raphidophora tetrasperma. This really gets absolutely no care. And to be honest, I find that these plants, they just need you to not care about them and then they start doing well. It's quite bushy. There's like a million cuttings in there. Then in the bathroom, we have a Propremnum aureum enjoy. This really does not, not like being underwatered, but it's really taken off here and it's really quite beautiful really likes the bathroom and can handle a little bit of colder temperatures i find then in the bedroom oh we skip back to the bedroom but here we are on the shelf we have philodendron brazil this these were the parts that fell off the mother plant that i planted them in their own pot and put them here 
Ranta Lucanora um, Kirchoviana, I believe. Really happy here, right beside the window in the bedroom. Um, you can see I take a little bit more of a minimal approach to the rest of the house. This is Hoya Minamoria hanging up on the curtain rail in the bedroom. Consistently flowers, so beautiful. I love it just kind of on its own and it's a really, really big plant now. The flowers are gorgeous. They smell so nice, especially when you're going to bed at night. Um, be careful about stinky Hoyas in your bedroom at night, <laughs> but pick one that smells really nice and it will be beautiful. Recently we potted this and it's put out loads of new vines. In my husband's office, he has one plant. It is a Sansevieria Moonshine. Are they still called Sansevieria? Maybe not. Um, but yeah, the moonshine, really, really beautiful. It's kind of the only snake plant I have left. Then we have this mad collection in the kitchen window. I don't know what this um, plant is called, the one with the big bulb. This is a ficus tree that, um, I, that my grandmother used to own. She recently passed away, so I've taken this on and I'm very scared of killing it. This is also a cutting from her epipremnum that she used to have, which was a staple in her house. This is Bird of Paradise, um, which is doing quite well. Recently repotted this as well. And then I have two Hoyas hanging, my Hoya Wayetii and my Hoya Sunrise, which I'm actually gonna take down here because you need to see how beautifully sun-stressed these leaves are. They turn so vibrant red. It's, oh, it is just such a, gorgeous 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 plant the flowers themselves then also get sun stressed and um, they well they first started turning pink and now they're really quite red if that will focus but yeah it consistently flowers for me it's really happy both of these got new pots at the beginning of the year and i'm hoping it fills out a bit more there's some kind of gaps and um, i think i should propagate it then we have this very tall begonia maculata which is absolutely huge you can't even tell and then monstera adansonii a classic these three i have normally on the kitchen window but it's hard to show you there these are kind of a mix of stuff we have a jade we have some cacti we have an echeveria and um, then we have um a, bur a puntia and a bur burrow's tail i believe um these like i don't have many succulents but these do quite well and then a Thanksgiving cactus, which is on a different window on its own, but very, very happy and getting a bit sun stressed as well. New leaves come in really pinky red. Here is something I never show. This is my uh, yellow bellied turtles um, enclosure. She is now 19 and a half years old. I have had her almost my entire life. And unfortunately, she is probably coming to the end of her life. You may be able to notice that she is going slowly blind, which is very upsetting, but I have an asparagus fern and a neon pothos here for kind of cover for her. She will not tolerate any aquatic plants, which is quite annoying, <laughs> but she's quite happy there in her big tank. Here then, this is the living room, by the way. We have Philodendron Mykins, which is probably my most neglected plant in the entire house. There's almost no soil left in that and it's really struggling. We have another Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is probably the best specimen of this plant I've ever had. And um, that Asplenium there, that blue fern, I can't remember the name of that either. If you want the names of any of these officially, just ask me in the comments, but I'm just quickly running through. Then on the window in the living room, we have Monstera Deliciosa, big one that I took from my sister when she moved out of the country. And I'm not honestly a huge fan of these. They look nice, but I don't find them that satisfying to grow. Then we have a very sad ZZ, which is slowly dying. And I think I will either kill it or give it away. <laughs> And then I've moved my Plamanii here, Philodendron Plamanii. I, I spoke in my recent Philodendron tour that I wasn't in love with this plant and it was kind of annoying me, but it's just put out this giant, perfect, absolutely gorgeous new leaf. And it's kind of made me like, oh, actually maybe I love it. 
So that's what's going on with her. <laughs> and we have this very precariously placed carnivorous plant terrarium, terrarium, which you may have seen in other videos and updates. I'll be giving an update on this mother grow light soon and letting you know how things are doing. But that is it for the tour. I forgot to film an outro, but I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you did get it, get to the end of this hour and a half long video which is absolutely insane. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your support and sending love to all of you. Thank you so much for watching the channel. If you do want extra bonus content and want to support, want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon. All my links are in the description of this video. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about one of my favorite hobbies in this life, which is caring and growing for plant, growing plants. Love to you all. I hope that you um, enjoyed this. I hope that you get to enjoy growing your own plants in whatever shape or form that it shape or form that that is. Our plants are not perfect as we are not um, and it's always a learning curve but a really um, fascinating thing and something that brings us closer to nature every day and it's something I really appreciate and I'm sure if you watch an hour and a half of this you also appreciate it so thank you. Thank you so much to my lovely patrons for this month. Thank you so much to Grace Walsh and Michael Curley for supporting me. If you're interested in checking out my Patreon, bonus content and other perks, you can check out the link in the description box of this video. I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.